Hello and welcome to the Prague Analyst. Today we're going to be talking about the Emerson, Lake, and Palmer song, Trilogy. We're going to be looking at the first part of the three-part trilogy, because as you can imagine, transcribing a whole Emerson, Lake, and Palmer song is quite a lot of work, so I'm going to start by focusing on the first part of the song in this video. You can look forward to a lot of recurring motifs and unusual harmony in this video. We start the song by an instrument playing this melody unaccompanied. This melody will go on to become a very important melody throughout the rest of this section. Then the piano cascades down from a higher range to a lower range using an arpeggio of B to A7, B to A7. We're in the key of B, so this is just our one and then our flat seven, seven chord. And eventually we land on B. Our bass starts to move down. So it starts on B here, goes down to A, G sharp and G, and our chords move with it. This is our one chord, our one chord again with uh, A in the bass. This would be our four chord in first inversion. And then this is a flat six chord. As this is happening in the right hand of the piano part, we get that melody again that we saw at the very beginning. You could see D sharp, F sharp, B, D natural, D sharp, F sharp, B, D natural. But here it's just harmonized with some new information in the left hand of the piano. Then in this 10th measure, we land at the beginning of the verse. The vocal melody of the verse, well, we've already heard it. It's that same opening melody, D sharp, F sharp, B, D natural, etc. That's the foundation of our melody in the verses. One thing I really like about this verse is the rhyme scheme. We have mend on beat three of the first measure, end on beat three of the second measure, and then tend, a delayed expectation of our rhyme scheme happening at the beginning of the fourth measure instead of on beat three of the measure before it. Then instead of continuing this pattern of having the rhyme happening on beat three, we continue the pattern of it happening on beat one every other measure as it goes to end again and then again. Looking at our harmony, we start with B, our one chord. This is four minor, one chord again in second inversion. And then this is our flat seven, seven chord again, this time in third inversion. What you'll notice is that it switches between the one chord and then a modal interchange chord, the one chord and then a modal interchange chord. So that it feels very home and comfortable and then it steps away from that and it comes back and steps away from that. That pattern continues, but then it takes twice as long. So here we get B, which is our one chord again. It lasts for a whole measure this time before our D, which is our flat three chord and G major seven, which is our flat six, seven chord, take us to another place of modal interchange away from the B. Same thing in the following measures. B is our one chord again, and E minor is our four minor chord. And then finally, B and then F sharp sus is a diatonic chord, uh, and it's our five suspended chord. The second verse has the same melody and the same chords, so I didn't transcribe the piano part exactly. So at this point, we've had two verses, and then we go into this B section. That starts with, I've sent this letter hoping it will reach your hand. Here, our bass is moving up by fourth. So we start with our four minor chord again, and it just continues to move by fourth. So this is flat seven, flat three, flat six, moving through all these modal interchange chords, driven by this consistent bass motion. Then this is, again, modal interchange chords are five minor and our flat six. That same thing happens again one more time, but the melody is extended. And as the melody is extended, we get one extra chord, our flat seven chord, which brings us to one. You'll see that the bass is moving just upwards, F sharp, G, A, B. So this is five minor, flat six, flat seven, one. I did a video a while ago on the song Life by Devin Townsend, and he used this flat six, flat seven, one chord progression that I said was very common, especially in prog rock music that wants to have a very epic sound. And here you go, another example of it. This section of the song is in A-A-B-A -A -A form. So as you'll remember, we'll have two verses that we just already had, which are our A section. This is our B section in the middle, just four measures long, before we go into another A section, another verse right after. This is a very common form, A-A-B-A -A form, but it's especially very common in classical music, which of course Emerson, Lake, and Palmer took a lot of inspiration from. Then after our third verse, we have a bit of a piano transition that happens. We end as we did before on the F sharp sus, and then in the left hand of the piano, it's switching between this D major and A minor chords, which are just these sort of out modal interchange chords that cascade down the piano until we land again on B. For these first two measures, the chords switch between B and F sharp over E, which is this very Lydian sort of sound, hearing this F sharp chord against the fourth scale degree E. It's very diatonic, but what I think is especially interesting is looking at the melody in the right hand. Check out these notes, D sharp, B, F sharp, D sharp, like a little arpeggio going down, right? Let's look back at our verse melody that happens just before it. For example, what I'm really feeling deep inside, D sharp, B, F sharp, D sharp. Same with the falling phrase, just a face where I can hang my pride, D sharp, B, F sharp, D sharp, F sharp. So essentially what it does in the piano part, it takes this rhythm, it accelerates it to twice the speed, then it uses that as the foundational motif because then it takes that idea 
and it takes that arpeggio and just transitions it to F sharp in the third and fourth beat of the measure. Even the instrumental piano parts are just built by extrapolating little pieces of the vocal melody and using that as its transition material. Next, we have just a walk down of chords, F sharp, E, D, C, and B. Just moves us right down all the way until we land on our one chord again. This instrumental interlude continues with a B arpeggio that eventually ends with just the piano repeating the note B over and over again in the left hand. In the right hand, we get a melody, D sharp, F sharp, B, D natural, etc. Sound familiar? It should because it's that same melody we saw at the beginning of the song, at the beginning of our verses, only instead of the rhythm being accelerated, like this one was, it's instead augmented. Instead of these being quarter notes, it's a half note now. So again, taking a piece of the vocal melody, but now it's doing it twice as slow in the piano part. We have a trill between the notes G and A, and then again, we've seen this before, F sharp, B, D sharp, F, G. Where have we seen that before? Our verses. For example, long ago, although we still pretend, F sharp, B, D sharp, F sharp, G. And the chords underneath it are the same too. B going to E is the same as B going to E. Even this is the same, D, G major. Uh, this melody is from the verse as well. D sharp, B, F sharp, D sharp. It's the same one that we saw here. It's the same one that we saw here. The piano part continues to be built by the same blocks as the verses. Then we get this little goodbye passage. The chords are five minor and one. And then it repeats the same thing. Again, this is part of the vocal melody that's being played in the right hand of the piano. And then another goodbye, five minor, one. This five minor to one chord progression is continued in the piano part in the following measure as it does these big sweeping arpeggios with block chords in the right hand of F sharp minor B, F sharp minor B. And then very unexpectedly, it goes to F, a surprising change as it sweeps an arpeggio up the piano. And it's an F Lydian sound because we have this B natural, but also most modal interchange major chords tend to be Lydian. We continue on that F sort of sound. This is again, the notes of F major plus a B. And the interlude continues. Here we have a figure in the piano part that's using notes of what I'm calling B7 flat five. I'm not sure that's actually really the best name for it, but it's made up of the notes B, D sharp, F natural, and A natural. I know those notes have the same notes as maybe an augmented sixth chord, but it doesn't really have that function here. I think it's more just sort of a whole tone sound that sounds dissonant, but then it resolves to a major B sound in the third and fourth beats. The third and fourth beats, by the way, D sharp, B, F sharp, D sharp, F sharp, We've seen that before. Again, that's this melody. It's also this melody coming back again. Then we go to F7, which is a tritone substitution of what would be the 5-7 of 4. So this resolves down by half step to a chord with E in the bass. This is another sort of strange collection of notes that create a very bizarre chord. It's got the notes E, A, B flat, and D natural, which I guess sort of creates an E minor seven flat five, but it doesn't have the third, it has an A instead. I don't think assigning a name to this chord is particularly important. What I think is actually more important is that this melody is the inverse of what we see here. So again, it's taking an idea from the verse and doing something completely new and different with it. It's basically taking the same directions as the previous notes, but doing it upside down. Where this went down, this one goes up. Where this one stayed on the same note, this one also stays on the same note. Where this one goes down, this one goes up again. It's the same thing, just in an opposite direction. We have this big A minor seven flat five chord that arpeggiates all over the piano. And then that is going to take us to our new key, which is going to be D major. In D major, we start with some very diatonic simple chords, one major, four major, and five major. D major is actually somewhat related to B major. It's related in the same way that the two keys were in the Paranoid Android video, if you watch that one. The parallel minor of B major is of course B minor. And then the relative major of B minor is D major. So it's the relative major of the parallel minor of B. And you might recognize this particular chord progression, although we're in a new key, it has our one and our five minor, our one and our five minor. And then again, one, five minor, one, five minor, all down there which we've seen the one and five minor chords being used in the previous section when we were in the key of B. The right hand is still doing that arpeggio melody thing from before, but now we're just in a new key. And here, like I just said, the rhythm rapidly accelerates. Instead of only changing chords every two beats, it changes chords every half a beat. As the right hand goes down the piano, and then wait a second, what's happening in this seven, eight measure? We've seen this before. E minor, A, D, G, F sharp minor, G, A. Where have we seen that before? It goes all the way back to our B section of the vocal melody. Those same exact chords, the same exact melody, it's all exactly the same. This even does the same walk up where it does go to B major just for a quick moment and it switches between B major, G, and B flat. B major, G, B flat, 
just this sort of parallel structure of major chords. And it continues that all the way up until it gets to this last measure that spills down the whole piano and transitions us into the second section of Trilogy. That's my breakdown of Trilogy by ELP. Thank you for watching. Please like it and share it with anyone else who might be interested. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe as well. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else about the song you enjoy or find interesting I might not have mentioned. Thanks again!